Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks very much for your time. Um, my name is Ellis. I uh, head up the specification and business development team here at Recoup. Um, the presentation today is um, our uh, wastewater heat recovery for residential new build, um, focusing essentially on, on the, the, the current Part L 2021 regs and how wastewater heat recovery can, can help assist achieving Part L compliance for, for new build. Um, so yeah, so we'll be um, focusing on, on on residential new build and, and how wastewater heat recovery interacts. Um, I, I am looking at putting together um, separate presentations for um, retrofit uh, MEs and also for non-residential and Part L um, should be ready for next month. So hopefully, if that's your interest, um, we'll, we'll have presentations there for that as well. Um, I do have a few slides and case studies loaded up at the back of this. So if anybody wants to discuss uh, non-resi um, or, or retrofit, feel free to stay on and we can discuss afterwards. So let's move forwards. Where are we? There we go. Right, okay, so I'm um, just going to look at a, a, a brief overview on, on wastewater heat recovery, what it is, what it does, uh, how it works, um, a, a bit of detail on recoup products um, and, and the scenarios that they work in, um, then a look at um, Part L and the future home standard and, and how wastewater heat recovery interacts, where hot water fits into that. Um, a bit of a, 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 a design led case study um, and looking at sort of the impact. And a bit of SAP modelling if there's any SAP assessors in the room and then finally some more generalised case studies for net zero and, and other elements and some Q&A. Uh, I will stop at strategically sort of um, uh, placed uh, elements here just so check that there's no questions or anything coming in on the chat. Um, I do have my colleagues Craig and James in on the chat so feel free to fire questions into the chat um, but as I said, I'll, I'll pause strategically um, just to catch up and make sure that um, each, each section has been understood as much as possible. Okay, so who uses wastewater heat recovery? Um, in the UK, it's mainly used um, by new build uh, developers for pile compliance for, for, for new build housing. Um, so historically, we've been used uh, on, on old regs since 2012, 2013. Um, but certainly with new regulations coming through, it, it's looking more and more um, important to look at hot water and, and, and efficiency of hot water as well as, as space heating. So new regulations seem to be looking at. So new build housing is the main uh, use case for wastewater heat recovery in the UK currently, but we do have products suitable for houses, apartments, bungalows uh, and other um, scenarios as well. So student accommodation and hotel new build is something that we're seeing much more um, uh, interest in now, again, driven by, by part L regulation. Um, in addition to that, anywhere where there's high shower traffic, so um, leisure and sports facilities, um, gyms, um, yourself, uh, changing rooms, etc., etc. All, all areas where wastewater heat recovery can have impact. Um, and then finally, looking forwards, uh, the expectation is that housing stock upgrades and domestic Ellis, retrofit... you're on will... silence. Apologies, everyone. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know where I was muted there, but um, let's, let's go back. So, um, OK, so housing stock domestic retrofit is, is something that we see a bigger growth area. Um, um, demand driven by, by funded measures. So EcoFit, I'm sorry, Eco4 is expected to uh, have hot water allowable with a legislation change coming towards the end of this year, early next year. And then there's also MEES, of course, for, for non-domestic. Um, currently all non-domestic um, properties need to be uh, at least EPCE by April of this year. Currently, I think there's only about 2% that aren't, um, but certainly by 2027 EPCC. Uh, is the target and there's around about 30% of uh, non-residential buildings in the UK that haven't hit that target yet. So there's lots of growth for um, for retrofit and potentially for wastewater heat recovery there. Um, but we can talk about that separately if, if anybody has interest there, um, certainly with um, lots of drivers there coming through at the moment. So why use wastewater heat recovery? Um, significant energy and CO2 reductions for, um, uh, for, for hot water uh, essentially. So it's a simple heat exchanger technology that is 
easy to install in most cases and really requires very little layout adaptations or um, installation knowledge in most cases. So it really is a very simple option uh, for new build housing. Uh, it offers simple cost-effective Part L compliance and that's, that's the, the route uh, for using in most cases. It's, uh, nobody likes to think of their product as a tick box, but if you, if you want to tick a box, this wasteful heat recovery really does a good job of that. Um, one of the most cost-effective measures available in SAP versus the amount of SAP points that can be gained. Um, but it does offer um, significant uh, hot water or energy reduction um, for showers. So showering is, is a big part of hot water use. So um, the impact that wastewater heat recovery can have, so in a, in a new, build, um, uh, new build house, for example, uh, wastewater heat recovery vertical pipe installed to uh, an ensuite shower would be expected to reduce the energy use by about 55%. Um, so it really is quite impressive. Um, and also importantly, there's no end user interaction required with wastewater heat recovery. So um, there's no uh, mechanical moving parts, no electrical connections, no filters, no consumables. It's a simple heat exchanger design and it will work instantaneously when the shower is switched on. So it can't be isolated, it can't be removed, it can't be turned off. And for most cases, there's no um, user uh, knowledge that it's even installed. There's no change to the user experience. So it, it just most, most cases, end users don't know that it's installed. Um, as I said, very easy to design in. Um, fit and forget, so completely passive. Has a very long working lifespan. So vertical pipe systems uh, generally have a 40 to 60 year uh, attributed lifespan from bays uh, with uh, horizontal systems of around about 25 years. So really is a, compared to a lot of other measures, really is a long working lifespan. And for those of you that have got an eye on embodied carbon, uh, wastewater heat recovery is very low embodied carbon because it's a highly recyclable product and we use a circular manufacturing process. So uh, I have a slide towards the end on embodied carbon just to frame that slightly better. Um, just a note here, um, if, hopefully you can see the slides perfectly well, but if not, there's three dots in the bottom corner where you can fit to frame and that should make it fit your screen. Um, so just to uh, look at the various products, so we're, 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 sorry, look at the technology. We're going to focus uh, in the first instance on the vertical pipe system as designed into a standard new build uh, dwelling with showers on first floor and above. Um, so in the main, without wastewater heat recovery, uh, when most people shower using a thermostatic mixer, um, the comfortable sort of 40 degrees coming out the shower head is a mix of around about 50% generated cold water, I'm sorry, incoming cold water at about 10 degrees um, and about 50% generated hot water at about 55, 60 degrees. And a thermostatic mixer will uh, maintain a constant flow rate and a desired temperature. And if there's any alteration in, in temperatures in the background, it will adjust the ratio accordingly. Um, so wastewater heat recovery to be SAP compliant re requires a thermostatic mixer valve to be uh, on the shower. Um, and then generally when you are showering of that 40 degrees or so coming out of the shower head, about 85 to 90% of the heat energy normally goes down the drain and is lost. So there's a lot of uh, embodied heat energy in, in that waste drain water that we can, we can use. And that's exactly what wastewater heat recovery does. So you can see here, hopefully, um, that we have um, the, the, the vertical pipe sat underneath the shower. So it's gravity fed on the waste side and that warm waste will drop through one side of the heat exchanger and then vents off to the SVP as normal. So we're not harvesting the gray water or anything along those lines. We're purely interested in the, in the heat energy. So as the, you turn the shower on, warm waste goes down the drain, cold water comes in to replenish the uh, shower and the, and the hot water system. And so that cold water that comes in goes around the outside of the heat exchanger and is preheated. And that's the basic premise of wastewater heat recovery. That incoming cold water main at about 10 or 12 degrees um, will be uh, preheated up to about 25 or 28 degrees. So it's a big free energy uplift from what would normally be going down the drain. So we're just recycling that heat energy back into the incoming cold. Um, and that's, that's the basics of wastewater heat recovery. It really isn't any more difficult than that. However, there are three SAP listed installation methods um, all of which have different efficiencies. So what we're looking at here, and I'll just move on to the next slide so you can see a schematic. Uh, what we're looking at is um, system A, which is the most efficient method of piping up the wastewater heat recovery. Uh, and as you can see, 
uh, the warm waste uh, is, uh, sorry, the, the cold comes in, comes out preheated, and then that preheat we will send to the cold side of the shower mixer and back to the hot water source, whatever that may be. And so by sending preheated water to the cold side of the mixer, the shower mixer now receives warmed water on the cold side, and therefore the mixer will automatically adjust the ratio of hot to cold in favor of more free issue cold. So uh, where we had a 50-50 mix or thereabouts beforehand, we're now looking at about a 70-30 mix in favor of the cold side. So immediately we're using less hot water per shower. Um, and then by sending preheated water back to the hot water source, whatever that may be, so uh, combi boiler, uh, standard cylinder, smart cylinder, uh, air source heat pump, um, heat interface unit, whatever it may be, as long as it can accept a preheated cold feed, then by sending preheated water to the, for instance, cylinder, um, the cylinder doesn't have to heat from 10 degrees up to 60, it's now heating from about 25 up to 60. So we're using less hot water per shower and the hot water we are using is generated more efficiently. So it's that system that would give us around about that 55% reduction at sort of 11 litre per minute shower. Um, by contrast, system B uh, is the least efficient method of installation, but also the simplest. And quite simply, you can see here, we're just sending that preheated water to the cold side of the shower mixer. Um, and then those of you paying attention will probably understand that system C is where we send the preheat just to the hot water source only. So system A is the most efficient. That's normally what we would use for a primary shower, maybe an ensuite in a, in a, in a standard house type. Any secondary systems would then be system B, so they are closed loop from the hot water um, source. So it's one as primary as system A, secondary as system B. And then system C isn't seen too often in non-resi, but certainly for, for residential, if you've got a townhouse scenario, perhaps if, if you can imagine you've got a second floor shower stacked above a first floor shower, the pipe can locate on the ground floor. And then rather than putting pipe work all the way through two floors, by simply feeding preheat to the uh, cylinder, for instance, that might well be on the uh, in a utility room on the ground floor. It's less pipe work, but uh, not a great deal less efficiency. So system C uh, tends to be used for, for, for townhouses, stack showers, that sort of thing. Just to qualify some of those numbers very briefly. So as, as a heat exchanger, the slower the flow rate across the unit, so we're seeing here standard shower flow rates, 11 litres per minute and nine litres per minute, um, the, the better the heat recovery efficiency becomes as you go uh, down to slower flow rates. Um, so here our standard heat recovery efficiency at 11 litres per minute on the pipe hex is about 63.6%. Uh, that rises to about 68% at nine litres per minute. And then that translates as a system A energy reduction that's on the less heat, uh, less hot water from the cold side and uh, better, more efficiently produced hot water on the, on the hot side. Um, that gives us around about a 55 to 58% uh, energy reduction. And then just to quantify system B, which is the least efficient, is still significant. So this is purely down to uh, hot water, using less hot water per shower. So anywhere between about 40 and 43 is common for, for standard shower flow rates in new build. Um, so I'll just pause there just for a moment, see if there's any questions on, on that part, Craig. Uh, only one question regarding maintenance or any planned maintenance. Okay, so uh, because there's no moving mechanical parts, filters, consumables, uh, wastewater heat recovery is, is, is kind of deemed as no planned maintenance or planned maintenance free. Um, it, 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 it doesn't need um, to be accessible. Um, however, just as, a, as a, uh, a, an energy efficiency device, it, it, it needs to be installed with what's termed reasonable access so from a vertical pipe system that can be boxed in next to the svp behind plasterboard that's not an issue um, for the horizontal systems which we'll come onto in a moment they can be installed under baths or under shower tray under shower trays for example so we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a moment um, so just to look yeah. at those products in a bit more detail so our main product is sorry a sorry, Ed, sorry ellis i think Ed, ed's got a question oh sorry Karen. yeah thank you yes yeah, so you, you say that it will sit alongside a vertical svp so how big will that SVP boxing now become? I will show you exactly that in a moment. So if you can hold on just Perfect. two or three slides. Um, so the main product is the vertical pipe. It's, it's absolutely fantastic in terms of heat recovery efficiency and cost efficiency. But the negative is that it's gravity fed. So it works very well when you've got showers on first floor and above. But for ground floor showers and apartments, we then have a range of other products. So we'll come on to that in a moment. But just to take a look at the pipe system, 
Um, so this is uh, just a shown as um, a, a kind of marketing diagram, but shows that it boxes in next to the SVP, as you might expect. Uh, it's a two meter vertical pipe or a 2.1 meter vertical pipe with an installed height of 2.35. So it will fit within a standard 2.4 meter ceiling. Um, very high efficiency. Part of that efficiency is due to the length of the exchanger, but also the uh, turbo rotator, which we use it, which is part of our, our sort of uh, waste um, uh, input, if you like. So um, what happens here is that the warm waste comes through in yellow, uh, purely is directed to flow in a, in a uh, cyclonic motion. And then that warm waste will then cling to the inside of the copper heat exchanger as it drops all the way down the unit. So warm waste comes in, is um, directed to spin, clings then in what we call thin film uh, heat exchange. So we're maximizing surface contact with the inside of the heat exchanger. And then at the same time, cold water main comes in and will go around the outside of the heat exchanger and will come out preheated. Um, so usually simple first fix installation. Um, in addition to the product, so the wastewater heat recovery pipe and the installation kit, which uh, is the mountings and the other elements for the waste, all that's required from the plumber side is an isolation valve, full flow shut off valve, top and bottom, and a double check valve for compliance. So it really is very, very simple to install. Um, very easy at first fix, normally sort of one to two extra hours of plumber's time. Um, and it requires very very little um, design changes. So I'm uh, coming on to that question about boxing in. Normally your SVP boxing will be about 220 by 220. Um, with wastewater heat recovery attached, it really is probably about another 200 mil in one direction. So we have standard drawing types, which we can send across. So this is, um, I think this is used on Barrett, Barrett, Barrett standard drawings. Um, so yeah, so very, very little extra fl fl um, footprint uh, required. Um, all Recoup products use a double walled heat exchanger. So you can see here, this is a cut through on the pipe. So this is the actual heat exchanger itself. Um, that warm wastewater will cling to the inside of the pipe here. So it's a smooth 50 mil diameter copper pipe. Um, but the eagle-eyed amongst you will see that there's striations running through. So it's actually a mechanically pulled pipe through pipe. And these striations run the entire length of the unit and they're open top and bottom. What that does, it gives us a visible leak detection system, uh, which means we can directly comply with uh, EN 1717 and, and UK water regulations. Uh, what it means in practice, if we used a single walled exchanger, um, the shower trap would need to be moved from under the shower or bath to downstream of the wastewater heat recovery unit. Because we use a double walled exchanger on all of our products, the shower trap stays in place under the shower where it needs to be and does the heavy lifting. So um, th there's no other changes to the design when using uh, double walled heat exchanger products. Um, if there's developers or installers in the room, just to let you know, all of our products are stocked and sold through all the national merchants. So we can dove chow very easily into your existing supply chain. Um, and just, uh, I kind of covered some of this on installation operation, but um, generally one to two hours of, of plumbers extra plumbers time at first fix. Um, only basic plumbing tools, knowledge and materials required. Um, no specialist training or commissioning required. So no MCS accreditation or anything along those lines. Um, it said no plan maintenance, just simple standard routine cleaning that you might do with uh, any normal shower drain, whether it's got wastewater heat recovery or not. Um, and very importantly, no behavioral changes, no isolation switches, nothing can be, be turned off. When wastewater heat recovery is installed, it's essentially part of the plumbing infrastructure and it will remain so. So as I said, the, the pipe system's absolutely fantastic for standard new build housing, but the negative is it needs to sit on the floor below the shower it connects to. So the, this other range of products we have, the, the next uh, best in terms of cost efficiency in most cases is the Easy Fit. Um, it's ideal for apartments or anywhere where there's showers over baths. Um, so obviously a thermostatic mix of showers required for SAP compliance. But as you can see here, it, it's simply uh, locates in that unused void space under the bath. So the bath panel can come off and it can locate directly under the bath. Um, not quite as efficient in terms of design, so it's about two thirds the efficiency of the pipe system. However, um, in terms of SAP score, it does score very, very well, very similarly in fact to houses as it will do in apartments because of the way SAP's calculated. So it really is in terms of uh, a product that fits its uh, intended uh, area of use, it, it does very, very well. Um, can also fit under suitably sized shower riser trays. So we'd have um, 
drawings for a number of different uh, shower riser trays, but generally anything that's 1400 mil or, uh, or longer in one dimension, um, what the easy fit will, will fit under. Um, it, it requires around about anywhere between about 100 and 110 mil clearance. So generally for most riser trays and certainly most standard baths, that really isn't an issue. Um, I can, if anybody wants to stay on afterwards, I think I can cut across. We've got our, our installation version here in the demo room, so we can kind of show you that in a bit more detail if that's of interest. Um, again, same sort of simple method of, of, of operation um, in that warm waste goes down one side of the heat exchanger and out the other side, vents off to the SVP. Uh, cold water comes in on the opposite side, so we get counterflow heat exchange. In this case, the exchanger is a kind of flat serpentine exchanger, so lots of surface area on the pipe, and then that comes out preheated on this side, goes off system A, B, and C as, as per normal. Um, what happens here is the warm waste comes through and kind of floods out along the base of the unit, and that will then um, turbulate and mix over the exchanger. So we get lots of, uh, excuse me, sorry, I thought I was in here, um, lots, of, lots of mixing, um, lots of turbulation and therefore picks up lots of heat on the exchanger. Um, the, the unit is designed so the exchanger is about two millimetres above the base of the pan. So uh, any debris, any hair, etc. that gets through the shower trap, which is obviously in place under the shower or bath, um, that is designed so that it will just flow through at end of use. So um, it, it, it's designed completely from the ground up this product, unlike anything else on the market and is designed so that any debris or, or hair or anything at the end of use will just flow through. So it's not, you know, it shouldn't have any issues with, um, with blocking and things, which is often a, one of the first questions we get on this product. Um, and as I said earlier, very, very good um, SAP score for apartments. So it really is very cost effective as a, as a scenario for apartments. Um, so that's the easy fit the under bath system um, we've just also released um, specifically for apartments or, or for low profile shower trays um, a pumped upgrade kit to work with our existing pipes so uh, i said the pipes the most efficient uh, product that we have so what we have now is a, a pump system which will allow um, the warm shower water to flow into the pump the pump will activate and then that will pump up and over into our proprietary um, turbo buffer at the top here and then that will then flow through the wastewater heat recovery pipe as normal. Um, so what this does, this allows us to use the high efficiency pipe uh, on the same floor as the shower it's connected to. Um, so uh, it, it gives an, another option um, if you're looking at um, higher SAP points or higher efficiency for, for instance, apartments or, or ground floor shower scenarios. Um, it's designed uh, using a, 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 an off-the-shelf um, Sanaflow pump, so we've, we've teamed up with Sanaflow here, um, a product that's got great pedigree, great servicing uh, and great efficiency or, or low, low, low power. Um, and it's also designed so it's very flexible in terms of how it can be designed in. So for um, apartments, for modular bathroom pods, etc, etc, um, it's a uh, a, a system that can uh, be flexible in terms of, 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 of its design um, and what, what I will say is whilst the pipe or the wastewater heat recovery unit itself is planned maintenance free the pump obviously is a mechanical component so this will need to be accessible uh, and potentially will need planned maintenance or, or servicing going forward so that's just unfortunately a compromise with using a pump system uh, in, in, in any scenario but um, yeah so it's just as part of designing in this would normally be maybe uh, boxed in behind a, a vanity unit or something along those lines. Uh, but as I said, same high efficiency as, as the pipe system, and this is now fully SAP listed with the same efficiencies as the pipe. Um, and then just to complete the portfolio, we also have a uh, range of wastewater heat recovery integrated wet room drains, um, high efficiency units, uh, anywhere from 35 up to about 57%, uh, three different models. Uh, and these are designed primarily for um, uh, non-residential, so um, communal showering environments, um, gyms, leisure, etc. Anywhere essentially where there's communal showers and, and wet room floors in most cases. So they're designed for tile in wet room floors in the main, but can be used with um, vinyl floors as well if the, if the floor makeup allows. So as you can see here, all of the wastewater heat recovery um, heat exchanger is located within the body of the drain. And then that uh, wastewater heat recovery uh, element and the shower trap 
uh, all located there, but all completely accessible. So whilst, um, again, these, the wastewater heat recovery element is essentially plan maintenance free, obviously in high shower traffic environments, any wet room drain is gonna need um, regular cleaning, so part of a, a, a maintained cleaning schedule. So the, um, the, the cover plate and the percolation plate here can all be completely removed and the whole internal part can be cleaned out as and when required. So if it's sort of weekly, monthly, uh, deep cleaning, etc. Um, but works in the same basic way, uh, warm shower water will flow into the drain. Uh, in this case, drops onto the percolation plate. You can see this has got holes here. They, uh, they strategically sit above the exchanger. So that again, we get this uh, thin film heat exchange uh, dropping down onto the exchanger. And then the, the gray water just goes off to the drain and, and off to the SVP as normal. Um, and these units, as I said, really good for um, non-residential. Um, whilst they're slightly more expensive, so not used so often in, in, in residential scenarios, for non-residential, for high shower traffic environments, anywhere with sort of 10, 15, 20 showers a day, ROI is really incredible on these. So it really is um, something that should be looked at. And certainly, obviously, if, if, if you've got high energy use for hot water for showers, wastewater heat recovery really should be considered there. Um, I'll pause that's as sort of much as we'll go into on the products. Any questions on products that have sort of not answered there, Craig? Um, only one question from Mark, where he was asking about if there's any uh, test data that can be issued showing the levels of heat recovery. Yeah, absolutely. I, was, I probably should have mentioned that at the top, really. So all of our products are tested by Kiwa, which are an independent European test house uh, designed um, well, certainly the, the, the Dutch um, Kiwa Test Center is designed for testing wastewater heat recovery. So all wastewater heat recovery products through Europe tend to go on, onto the Kiwa testing. Uh, that independently tested and validated data uh, then is used by BRE and the data from BRE then goes on to use, uh, be used for SAP, SBEM compliance, etc. So all of the data is, is tested and validated. Um, and we tend to, when we're talking about efficiencies and, and um, uh, that type of thing, I tend to use the SAP default. So, and we'll come on to that in a, in a calculator at the end. So we can look at it in much more granularity if you've got um, other projects where um, residential ROI is needed or commercial showering and that sort of thing. We can, we can tweak away from, from the SAP defaults and, and look at that in more granularity for you. So why is hot water important? Well, um, essentially, it, it, historically, a standard sort of three bedroom house or, or most homes, historically space heating has been the biggest energy user in the home with hot water generally sort of a, a, a smaller second. But obviously as um, homes are becoming more efficient, as regulations driving for better air tightness, for better fabric and better um, uh, space heating efficiency in terms of boilers and air source heat pumps and things, um, the space heating demand in homes is becoming much, much less, but that doesn't mean that people shower or their showering habits are any different just because you live in a passive house versus a uh, 1930s terrace doesn't mean that you shower any differently to anybody else. So hot water um, is becoming a bigger part of the energy mix to the point of on new build and certainly on more uh, heavily insulated homes, hot water is generally seen as the biggest energy user in, in the home there. So it's very important to, to look at that. And as I think I said earlier, generally showering in most homes is about 50% of the generated hot water use. And in apartments, it can be anywhere up to sort of 70 or 80% of the generated hot water use. So it really is important to not waste that, that water that's going down the drain. So that's where obviously wastewater heat recovery comes in. So. Uh, we've got a lot of wasted heat energy, as I said, 85 to 90 percent going down the drain. So if we try and quantify that in a sort of um, your kind of average house there with two thirds or 60 percent of the uh, heat uh, energy going on space heating, if about 23 percent is on hot water, 50 percent of that on showering and 15 percent is going down the drain. Sorry, 85 percent is going down the drain. That could potentially be a, 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 around about 10 percent of a home's energy budget going down the drain and being lost. So it really is something that needs uh, consideration. When we look at that under the um, sort of modeling for new regs, that same three bed home, uh, space heating demand is reduced to about 45%, um, but relatively hot water is, is a bigger part of that energy mix. And therefore showering uh, would be a bigger part of the energy mix. And so the energy that's wasted is a bigger per by percentage. It's going down the drain. Although the absolute numbers are probably the same, as I said, not necessarily showering habits aren't necessarily changing. Um, so 
Future Home Standards has has kind of caught up with that and is um, it now treating hot water um, much more seriously as it as previous incarnations of regs have looked at, at space heating, which is is really good. Um, but the as most people probably know, have seen, the headline for Future Home Standard 2025, which is due to be consulted on next month, um, is essentially around about 70-75% lower CO2 emissions, um, a ban or, or a, a, a essentially a ban on fossil fuel uh, for space heating, so a move towards all electric, so air source heat pumps, etc. And the idea with moving to all electric is that homes that are built from 2025 onwards, new homes that are built from 2025 onwards, should be in a position to decarbonize as the energy grid decarbonizes and becomes fully renewable. Um, and therefore those homes built from 2025 shouldn't need any retrofitting to essentially go to net zero. So that's the main ethos for, for future home standard. Um, however, in the interim, oh, sorry, I won't go on to the interim yet. Um, but to move to all electric, so the question might be, why don't we move to all electric right now uh, under new regs? And the reality is at the moment, the energy demand for heating and hot water is way higher than the grid can supply. Um, so we really need to look at reducing uh, peak demand in, in houses as much as possible. So the stepping stone regulations or the current regulations, Part L 2021, which um, we're currently in transition and come fully into play for June 2023, so three months time. Um, they're looking at this by improving the notional dwelling fabric, by improving thermal um, bridging, uh, increasing PV on the baseline case, so reducing the amount of uh, incoming energy for homes, but also um, looking at using wastewater heat recovery in the notional dwelling to reduce hot water demand. So by trying to attack this demand and bring this down, it should get homes of the future in the position to move to all electric. So um, for Part L 2021, gas boilers are still allowable, but the fabric, the air tightness and um, the uh, renewables element are all be increasing to uh, give us around about a 31% uh, carbon reduction on, on homes being built going forwards. Um, so as I said, we're, we're currently in the transition for Part L. So from uh, June 2023, all homes built in England under new regs will, will be built to Part L 2021. Um, that is uh, slightly different for Scotland and for Wales, um, but they are slightly behind us in terms of timing, but Scotland certainly slightly ahead of us in terms of uh, the, the regulation. So we're kind of at the moment, we're just focusing on, on the English regs here. Um, in Part L 2021, for the first time, wastewater heat recovery has been included in the notional dwelling. So the notional dwelling is the uh, is BRE's sort of uh, prescribed most cost effective recipe for hitting Part L. Um, so the headline here is um, higher fabric efficiencies, uh, gas boilers still allowable, um, but low temperature um, is, is specified down at 55 degree flow temperature. So that may potentially uh, require bigger heat emitters, so bigger radiators, for example, or underfloor heating. Um, natural ventilation specified around about 40% of the ground floor area is expected to be required for PV um, and wastewater heat recovery expected to be used on all showers. Um, so that's the, 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 the notional dwelling, uh, which is why in the main wastewater heat recovery has been looked at more seriously now going forwards um, for, for developments. Um, so air source heat pumps are a good solution uh, and certainly will uh, get um, developments through in the most cases through part L 2021 and um, the issue currently with with air source heat pumps and certainly for um, larger developers and developments that are transitioning across regs is infrastructure and um, supply chain at the moment the supply chain in the UK isn't quite mature enough to uh, certainly allow for all new build to be uh, uh, using heat pumps I think we're looking at around about 60 to sort of 70,000 heat pumps installed in the UK at the moment and around about 180,000 new build homes in England. So it's there's a bit of discrepancy there, but the, the ambition is to get the UK supply chain to a point where it can cover uh, 600,000 units a year. So it, it's quite ambitious and quite a big scaling up there. Um, so it, at the moment, certainly for the volume developers that we're, we're speaking with, um, around about 80 to 90% of their new builds are expected to be using gas boilers. Obviously, 
most developers are looking at pilot schemes and exemplar schemes and things as well for future home standards. So there, there is a lot of air source heat pump trials and other efficiency, uh, um, uh, energy efficiency trials going on, um, which is, is very positive. But looking forward to um, part L2021, it seems that mainly gas boilers will, will be used in the main. Um, and therefore that, that notional dwelling um, uh, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. The notional dwelling looks like it's the, the most cost effective route with uh, gas boiler, PV, uh, fabric efficiency, and wasteful heat recovery. Um, we are seeing this with most of the, the, the volume developers that we're working with, um, kind of mainly because of uh, infrastructure transition and, and using known technology, it seems to be the main, but it's not just us and it's not just the notional dwelling that's putting this forwards. Uh, certainly think tanks such as Future Homes uh, Hub has done a lot of work on um, looking at sort of um, fabric with um, transitional fabric, uh, notional dwelling fabric and future home standard fabric and different heating and, and hot water supply options. But in the main, they're also seeing that wastewater heat recovery realistically should be used, if not for the uh, SAP points, then as more of a holistic part of a solution with air source heat pump to help reduce, for instance, short cycling, uh, smooth out the seasonal variation you get with heating and hot water with air, air source heat pumps, um, perhaps sort of um, sizing down cylinders and, and that sort of thing. So it, it is a complementary technology and certainly a future proofing technology um, is I think the takeaway from this. I'll leave that there because I've gone over most of that. Um, any questions along? Sorry, that's a bit of a, 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 a ramble there, I'm afraid. I've kind of lost my train of thought at the moment. But any questions there, Craig? Um, just one regarding um, level access for showers on the ground floor. Um, part M42 and M43 specifically of, of the of the building regulations, which I think is like DDA. Yeah, access, I mean, re realistically, no we're, we're an additional element to the shower. So as long as your shower is compliant, you would then need to look for a suitable wastewater heat recovery option that would work. So if that level access was on a floor above the pipe might be an option. Um, if the level access uh, can, um, if, if the floor makeup can take a, a, a wet room drain, then that's an option. Um, if not, the pumped system may well be an option to pump up and over. So it's whatever's specified in terms of your, your shower to meet those compliance, then it's just a matter of realistically bolting on a wastewater heat recovery to, to, to for the energy efficiency element. Okay, so um, how are we for time? Not too bad. Okay, so we're going to kind of run through um, a, a, a sort of designing case study for just for a standard three bed and, and look at the SAP impact there under part L. But I think really the, the, the takeaway from this is that wastewater heat recovery essentially is a very simple technology to design in. So if you're a specifier, if you're a developer, I think I think to, if you can understand it, it's, it is very simple. And in the main, a single pipe installed as system A to a master ensuite is normally going to give the biggest uplift and biggest amount of SAP points for the least amount of cost. So certainly if you've got uh, apartments or two and three bedroom houses, a single wastewater heat recovery unit attached to the main shower would normally give the biggest uplift. So that's probably going to cover about 80% of house types. Um, obviously, if you've got bigger house types, as I said earlier, um, a pipe installed, for instance, a system A to a master ensuite, and then any secondary showers can be covered with um, wastewater heat recovery as a system B install. Um, and certainly, if you have the ability to influence the design at early stage, if you can get back-to-back um, -back bathrooms and shower rooms, for example, then it's certainly possible that the waste from an ensuite shower and from a shower over bath or a back-to-back -back ensuite can um, flow into one pipe and therefore it reduces the amount of cost on the pipe. Um, I, I probably should qualify in, in terms of costing uh, for the pipe system. I mean, keep saying it's cost efficient. Normally their uh, installed cost would be sub 500 pounds would, would be uh, right for um, most developers, I would say. So as I said, because we sell through the, the merchants, we can't give exact costings and obviously volume comes into play, but anywhere 450 to, to 500 pound installed cost for developers is, is fairly typical. Um, so we, we, we have a technical team here, Craig and James, both part of that. If you have um, house type floor plans or development plans. If, if you're not sure about wastewater heat recovery, just send them across. We can come back very pretty quickly and just advise on, on different system types. So if that's probably the, the main takeaway from that part. 
Um, so just to look at a, a typical three bed, two bathroom uh, house type then. So what we're looking at here is um, a family bathroom with a bath only in this case, just from, from a simplicity of modeling and then a thermostatic mixer shower on the ensuite. Um, and as you might expect, the vertical pipe system installed a system A to the master ensuite is, is, is the, 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 the best option here. Um, if you do send across floor plans to us, generally we'll come back with a tabulated list of different options. Um, obviously for this particular one, it's, it's fairly simple options because there's only a couple of, um, or a couple of bathrooms there. But what we'll always do is come back with specification notes, with uh, design and installation notes, so you understand what we're specifying, what the options are and why. Um, and also for the SAP assessors, we'll put in the PCDB uh, listing numbers as well. So that makes it just easier when you're modeling, you don't have to go through infinite pages of waste for the heat recovery products. Um, and just on um, on um, SAP design, so uh, SAP 10.2 is, is now fully live. Um, my understanding is it's almost 100% um, working, but certainly waste for the heat recovery is working uh, very well in it. Installing wastewater heat recovery is, is looking as though it's very simple for most, but the one issue that we've seen uh, or, or had feedback on is that because it's a dynamic system, it's an online system, uh, sometimes the, the check boxes and, and the boxes that you need to press aren't always in the same um, place, depending on ratios and screen sizes. So just one thing to note is when you're adding your wastewater heat recovery products, so you'd go in, you'd add your, your, your wastewater heat recovery products, so pipe, hex system a or drop in the pcdb number as we said just now um, you'd put in the number of baths that are present in the development um, and then here what you need to do is this is where you then add the shower and connect the wastewater heat recovery system you've just specified to the shower so sometimes for instance this box might be located at the bottom here depending on your screen resolution so sometimes people are missing this section so you just simply hit hit the plus it comes up with the shower option, so you might here put in um, a master ensuite, for example, um, connected to a, a combi boiler or a vented, unvented cylinder. Um, specify the flow rate, so it's quite important that you can specify shower flow rates now on new build. Historically, it was always at 11 litres per minute, but you can go anywhere down to, I think, um, 5 litres per minute in SAP now. So if you want ultra low flow rate showers, you can do that. And dynamically, that will adjust the efficiencies of the wastewater heat recovery unit. Um, and then it's a case of clicking that you're connected to that shower and then connecting the, the wastewater heat recovery unit you've just put in. So you can have up to two wastewater heat recovery units per dwelling. Um, so it really is quite simple. Uh, in terms of impact, so this is probably the, the, the more important part. So looking at um, that, that three bedroom um, house type we just looked at here, in terms of uh, primary energy reduction, uh, around about 10.7, 10.8%. Um, this is for a, a mid-terrace and a detached three-bed, and then CO2 reduction of around about 11, 11.3% um, 11, uh, 11 there. So it really is having a, a lot of impact. And actually, when you look at that primary energy, that ties in quite nicely to the sort of the pie charts that we were looking at earlier. So this is simply um, the ensuite shower um, having a pipe installed as system A. Um, just to caveat that this was, was actually done on the old SAP 10.1, but it, it should actually have a little bit more impact now on 10.2. Um, I did mention that we can, that, so that, that's for SAP. Um, uh, we can look at this in much more granularity using those keyword validated and BRE um, uh, uh, efficiency numbers. Um, so if you do need much more efficiency, we, we can offer that to you. Um, all I really want to draw your attention to here is the uh, CO2 savings per year on the different, uh, I've just moved my head out of the way, on the different fuel types, so gas uh, and then direct electric and then air source heat pump, just to tie that into um, the embodied carbon in the product. So I mentioned about embodied carbon earlier. Certainly embodied carbon and whole life um, carbon design is looking like it's going to be included in future home standard under SAP 11. So in a few years time, it, it's very likely to be embodied carbon will form part of SAP or certainly part of the compliance process, so it's probably something worth looking at. Um, we were um, quite lucky to work with um, SIBSI on their uh, development of their TM65 standard for embodied carbon in residential heating. We supplied um, data um, to the uh, early calculations, and so we got uh, early visibility on the embodied carbon number for our vertical pipe system. So I won't go through too much on this because we're running out of time a little bit, but um, the uh, calculated embodied carbon for um, our vertical pipe 
uh, comes out as 59 kilos of CO2. Um, this is in part because we have highly recycled um, product, um, recyclable product in it, majority copper uh, with uh, recyclable PVC, but also um, our factory uh, uses a, a, a cradle to cradle manufacturing process and also uses um, all green energy for um, the, the, the processing. So it really is a very green process end to end. Um, so we have a very low embodied carbon score. And if you look at that based uh, as, as a, to frame that against the operational savings of the product per year in a three bedroom home, we're looking against gas at about 164 kilos versus that 59. And then even on an air source heat pump uh, around about 130. So that kind of suggests that the amount of carbon that it takes to produce the product could be uh, mitigated in around about half a year's of, worth of use against an air source. Um, so it, it really is very low and it kind of frames that quite nicely, I think. Um, just to look at um, a, a design and example for uh, apartments, um, as I said, the, the vertical pipe is not normally used for apartments because obviously it needs to install on the floor below, so it's not normally desirable. Uh, in the main, for apartments, the main primary shower is, is normally a thermostatic mixer shower over bath. So the easy fit installed as uh, system A normally to a, a thermostatic mixer shower over the bath is normally the, the sort of the best primary option, the most cost effective option, and probably going to give the biggest initial sap uplift. But if you do need to cover on cover on suite showers, we then also have this pipe hex active as an option, or the easy fit can also locate under suitably sized riser trays. So there's an option there as well. Um, and I'll just leave that there. Any questions along that side, James? I'll, I'll just, I'm sorry, Craig, and I'll go into a case study. Uh, none in the chat, no. Great stuff, thank you. I'll move on then. Hopefully we will have some time at the end if anybody does have further questions. So uh, Recoup have been in the UK market for 11, going on 12 years now. So we've got thousands of residential installations. I think we're sort of up at around about 13, 14,000 um, units in the, in the UK. So um, it, it's worth looking at a case study which really looks towards the future. So this is the, the Barrett Z house. Um, Barrett have uh, essentially used this as their um, blueprint, if you like, or their, their, their aim for um, looking at net zero homes that they can build um, going forwards from sort of 2025, 2030 onwards. So the Z house is, is designed as a concept using an existing three bedroom uh, Barrett blueprint, but redesigned to include any, around about sort of 40 different sustainability, uh, low energy and uh, biodiversity um, measures which are available in the market now. So it's using existing technologies to essentially for, the, for a future proofing or, or net zero ready home now. Um, so Recoup have been um, sole supply to Barrett um, since 2013. Um, so we've, we've been supplying wastewater heat recovery with them for a long time and had a, a good partnership um, relationship with, with, with Barrett Group Technical for, for a while. So we're glad that they've used us uh, in, in our wastewater heat recovery in, in the Z house and also in the uh, the new energy house 2.0 which has been um, in the press quite a lot recently as well so the uh, the wastewater heat recovery as you'd expect is boxed in next to the S in within the SVP uh, this particular uh, product is connected to the ensuite shower and also to the waste from the shower over bath um, because this is uh, a, a, an exemplar home, this is using uh, a low flow shower on the uh, ensuite. So this is actually um, a Kelder um, powered low flow um, shower system, um, but that's working very well with the wastewater heat recovery. I think that's around about 5.5 litre per minute. Um, so it's a, a low flow shower, which gives a, a, a high output for want of a better word. Um, but from the wastewater heat recovery point of view, perfectly fine. And then the shower over bath, thermostatic mixer shower over bath, is just using a standard um, six litre per minute uh, restricted flow. And again, working perfectly well with that. Um, this also, this uh, the heating hot water in, um, or certainly the hot water is produced from an air source heat pump here. So we're installed as system A, and again, working perfectly well with the air source heat pump cylinder. So it really does show that, that wastewater heat recovery can be used going forwards uh, in, into future homes um, a, 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 and beyond the sort of the regulation and the compliance side as well. Um, so yeah, there, there we go, that's kind of that one. Um, so I, I do have some other case studies, I'm conscious of time, so I'll, I'll hold back on those, um, but I'll be happy to stay on afterwards. So at this point, I just wanna sort of point you to the resources that Recoup have online. So lots of resources 
Um, lots of uh, YouTube videos, uh, previous CPDs, probably better than this one in all honesty, are, um, are, are, are online. So if you want to drop into those or, or look at uh, previous CPDs or online CPDs, we have those as well. Um, we're giving online technical presentations monthly. And as I said, I'm going to build out to a uh, non-resi and also a retrofit option as of next month. Um, and then we also have learning zones and knowledge base as well, which have uh, in-depth um, responses to all sorts of queries in there so please do look at that as well and then finally we also got the studio here so if you're a developer and you want to or an installer and you want to have a look in more detail um, your installer teams or technical teams have a look at the products and, and, and we can work through that in a kind of exhibition style with you online as well so um, that's pretty much it so just before I sign off I just want to say thanks to everybody um, we do operate um, in lieu of the kind of traditional lunch and learn where we'd um, you know sandwich and, 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 a, and a lunchtime presentation we now offer as part of our sustainability um, we'll donate 25 trees for everybody that completes a CPD um, uh, form for the end so uh, essentially all, 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 all uh, attendees can can have 25 trees donated in their name so I'll send you the link for this at the end of, uh, after the presentation if you fill that in we'll automatically donate those for you so it really does build up the trees. I think we're about 7,000 in this past year. So it really is, is a, a really good initiative. So thanks very much. And hopefully we've got some time for questions if there are any. There was just one question, which I'm, I'm just uh, typing the answer to, but it was regard the, uh, regarding them being Pacify certified. Yeah, good question. Um, we, so recoup um, products aren't currently Passive House certified per se. However, um, we partner with a manufacturer in Holland and the, um, those products are Passive House certified. So essentially it's the same products, but different branding. Um, so you can use um, the, um, the manufacturer product listings under um, PHPP. Um, and for the only product that I think isn't in there currently, is the easy fit but we have um we, all pro products have been submitted so they're they're actually going through phpp now for recoup um, but we do have the dead time and things like that for the easy fit so it can be dropped in on P phpp just um craig's probably given you a link now to the knowledge base which has all that information so um yeah we we certainly can be used for passive house that's great thank you good stuff anything else Good. Okay. That's obviously yeah, explained way better than I thought it would be. <laughs> so just, just sorry, for one question on ROI, Ellis, if there's any data we can provide on ROI, which I, I guess really kind of project specific. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it is project specific. Um, the heat recovery efficiency of the products is what it is. It's tested, it's validated. So that, that, that's essentially fixed. The big thing for ROI is always going to be cost of fuel, um, number of shower uses per day shower flow rate and how long you know how much time spent in the shower and that will change absolutely differently for, for literally every probably house type and, and homeowner use but also project by project as well so we do have um case studies which sort of delve into that in a lot more detail let me kind of grab a uh should have a calculator back here somewhere for one of these projects, there we go. So that's one for, 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 for Gymbox, which was installed sort of five, six years ago. Um, really good ROI there. So we can get in as much granularity as, as you need on these projects. We, we tend to do this for all non-residential projects because um, for modeling in DSM, um, there isn't a direct drop down like there is in SAP. So we produce calculators to support the uh, DSM modeling. So. Um, yeah, again, we, we can um, support on that as much as needed. Good stuff. Okay, what I do then, um, thanks very much everybody once again. I will just hang on here for a little while um, if anybody has any other questions. Uh, if not, obviously all of our contact details will be in the follow-up email. So please do feel free to come back to us. Thanks very much. Ellis. Yeah, sure. Um, Ed was just asking for a link for the uh, the manufacturers in the Netherlands, which is um, I don't know if that's something you've got that you could share. I, I can I can send it out separately. Yeah. Um, if you want to follow yeah. up with me, um, and we we can share that with you. It's no problem.
probably it's more about the the PHPP certificate set, is it? It is, yeah. We've um, we're very early planning stage for a, a passive house we've got to build, um, and I've, I've got a product certification consultant on board who's asking for basically for, uh, specify the products wherever possible, make sure we've got the certification. So I'm just trying to head off something that they will ask for before we start specifying it in the build. It's no problem. Um, what are, do, you, do you know which product you're looking at at the moment, or is it just general? It's at the, it, at the minute, it is, it's very, very early days. I'm not going okay. to point to an architect um, or an engineer or anything, but we've never done a passive house. I've never done one. Um, and so I've started with their advice first and trying to look at what products. That's why I asked earlier about the boxings. You know, that starts to affect it. It's not the biggest of houses we're doing. It's probably a 70 square meter footprint. And okay, so yeah. Start putting boxings here, there and everywhere is going to start affecting other parts of the build. So, of course. Uh, yeah, it, I'm very impressed with everything I've seen. And if we can install a product that's got the certification, yeah. it just flows through the design process a lot yeah. easier. Absolutely, yeah, no problem. I mean, we can, um, with the certification, what we've done previously, we can provide the certification from Counterflow, which is the manufacturer, and then we have a letter from them basically just um, saying that it, it's it's the same product and things. So it, it covers that way. So it, it just gives you that, that sign off. Um, but as I said, we, we're, up, we're currently in the process of putting all recoup products through because Passive House is becoming, mm, there's more interest now, I think, you know, yes. previously, I, th I, I think it was so novel in the UK that it was just looking at space heating and put more PV on. But I think hot water is again being considered rightly so more, more you know, more, more now. So yeah. on all projects. So yeah, we're seeing more of it. So we should have those. Uh, I don't know what the timeline is, but it's probably a couple of months. Okay, well, that's fine. I mean, I'm probably not. When am I going to start? I'll start groundworks probably Easter next year. Oh, okay, so that's fine. So I mean, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you across the kind of the standard um, PHPP response anyway, which has outlines on those products, so you can see it. Um, but then, yeah. yeah, certainly by then we sh we should have our own. There there yeah. isn't any reason to think they will be any different um, because it's using exactly the same test data and the same yeah. assumptions in the background from PHPP. So. Great. So you'll email those to me, will you? I can do. Craig, I think up. we had um, somebody sent us through um, some screenshots on PHPP modelling as well, didn't they, the other day? I think he's gone. I, I'm sure yeah, I've got some yeah, screen. No, yeah, yeah, we did. I'm sure we've got some screenshots just showing how yeah. to drop it in as well. So I'll send those yeah. across as well because, you know, short circuit the learning um, that, for, for anyone great. as well. Good that'd stuff. That'd be great. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the presentation. No problem. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, bye-bye. Bye. Just a couple of other queries, Ellis. Yeah, um, uh, Gary's asked about, would you normally plumb the hand basin waste through the unit? No, we, on? on, we only want the, the shower waste. Um, the, realistically, there's not going to be a great deal of benefit from uh, hand basins or any other um, waste. Certainly, the, the, the only benefit you get from the hand basin is if you were running the tap with it hot and, and not having the plug in. It's the same, the same principle for a bath, realistically. It, it, it's certainly with the bath, you know, you, you fill up the bath. There's nowhere for that heat energy to go. Your, your, your cylinders um, recharge by that time you pull the plug. There's nowhere for the energy to go. So it purely is warm waste out, cold water in, and it's that cycle with, with showering that, that makes it work. You, you could potentially connect the, 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 the hand basin waste to the wastewater heat recovery unit. We generally discourage that because um, it's more likely to have other stuff going down there, shower foam, toothpaste, etc., etc. So it, 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 it's just stuff we don't necessarily want in the pipe. And whilst um, sort of looking historically, there's no reason to think that the pipe will sort of gum up or produce biofilms or anything along, the, along those lines. We just don't want to introduce anything in there that, that might add to that. So it's not advised to put hand basin waste in. That would normally just go off to the, the, the SVP as normal and then the grey, the shower pipe will fit to our unit. Um, and one more please, Ellis. Um, there's just been a request for a case study for a hotel application. Um, I've, I've linked to our, our knowledge base, but I didn't know if you had it on the slides is, there. Is the user still on? I can go through. I've got a couple loaded up now if you sort of just want to have a look at that. It was Michael. I'm not sure if Michael. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh, hi, Mike. <laughs> we were sat next to one of the mother Mike at the ISG event. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, do, you, do you want me to go over that now or, or come back to you separately? Um, 
I've got another meeting. If we can come back to me separately. You've yeah, got absolutely. I'll, I'll send a Teams link across. And then if you just want to yeah. book, come in the McAllen, we'll just go through a couple of bits uh, whenever it's convenient. That's no problem. Yep. Great stuff. Thanks very much. Thank you for that. Cheers, Alice. No worries. Is that everyone, Craig? Yep, I think that covers it. Marvellous. Excellent. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you.